Hello and welcome. My name is Michael Garwood. I'm the content director of Bees Buzz PR, and I'm joined remotely here today with DataPath's R&D director, John Story. And we're here to discuss the topic of control rooms, an incredibly important and indeed growing market. Hi, John. It's great to see you. Hi, great to see you, Mike. Sorry we can't do this in person, but next best thing. Absolutely. I suppose the best way to look forward is to first look back. So your vast experience, John, how would you say the role of control rooms have changed and evolved in recent times? Well, I think um, the one thing uh, that we can say is that, that what hasn't changed is the fundamental role of uh, a control room, and that its purpose is still, after all this time, uh, a need for, to bring lots of visual information together to present that to operators so they can make collective decisions. That, that part of it uh, is a constant. What has changed is the way that, that information is brought in and how it's sort of disseminated and shared. So if you go right back, originally sharing was all about putting everything on one large canvas, uh, the, 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 the control wall. Uh, and sharing meant being in the same room as that wall. So that was sort of as far as it went. Uh, as media has become more routable, and that's very much thanks to AV over IP, then um, you can bring that information together in front of those operators in many different ways. And with the sort of advances in display technology, a lot of that can now be shared at, display, at operator workstations. It could also be shared on the wall and also to people who aren't in the room at all. So, so that's the, the sort of the way that all that information is brought together and shared is what I would say is the biggest real change. Excellent, very interesting. And I guess with, um, with the world now working with Network Day V, allowing content when you want it, where you want it, how has DataPath tackled the issue of, issues of various bandwidths when sharing high volume video data? I think the, the main thing is to recognize that it's not a one size fits all when it comes to sort of AV um, um, media. Uh, different segments on a network will have different bandwidth capacities, different use cases call for different uh, qualities of the video or the media to, to be honored. Um, and, and therefore you need to have a, um, you need to have a, a system where all of those things can coexist. Sometimes you need high resolution with no compromise when it comes to like critical scrutiny of, of uh, images or video feeds. Sometimes you need zero latency when it's all about dynamic interaction. You know, and sometimes you just you want a sheer number of sources in one place. Maybe you're not as bothered about latency or, or the sort of quality. So more often than not, it's some sort of complex mix of all of those things. And I think recognizing that it's, it's, it's not just one flavor is key to this. Absolutely, yeah. Complex, I think, is a, is a good, good word there to describe. Yeah. Um, I guess, how do you see DataPath, yeah, a, a brand known globally for driving positive change in, in the market? I mean, how do you see DataPath influencing this data management moving forward? Well, clearly there is uh, increasingly a lot going on in these control rooms. And I think what, what we see is the need for integrated software solution that not only lets you operate um, in that control room, but also encompasses things like the, the design and management aspects of a project. So uh, something to help define the architecture requirements and take the strain of understanding the networking underneath that. Uh, and how all that's sort of going to interact. And if you if you if you come at it at that with in that sort of way with an integrated um, software um, uh, solution, then that software also understands all of that stuff going on under the hood. And so it's very easy to sort of uh, for it to to hide that from the operator. So it can leave the operator to get on with. The, the, the job of the operator, which is to um, be concerned with all of the things going on in the control room, rather than all of the technology that underpins all those things that go on in the control room. So, you know, we can do all of that in one unobtrusive user interface. It just brings everything together. Fantastic. And the very nature of control rooms uh, to monitor and control often 24 seven operations from the, the everyday tasks to critical crisis situations requires the constant feed of information, including you know, highly secure and, and sensitive data. 
So we know that security and um, reliability are two very primary concerns for any control room application. How would you describe DataPath's approach to these two core essentials? Well, the first thing I'd say, I think it's no secret that you can't just spray on uh, reliability and security to a system that was not properly designed with it in the first place. And that's where you've got to start. You've got to start designing it in that manner from the ground up. DataPath's got a long tradition of providing reliable hardware and software for 24-7 operations in control rooms and in many other areas. Um, and I would say a lot of that, the underpinnings of that is about thinking of things as systems. So, um, for example, at a hardware level, being as concerned about uh, power supplies and airflow as you might be about bandwidth and uh, resolution. Uh, and in software, um, thinking about the ways that software processes speak to each other just as much as what they speak about. So it's all about that system sort of holistic view. Um, and security, when, when we, uh, with the reliance on networking for the sort of integrated AV over IP um, solutions that we're, we're talking about today, um, you know, we, we, you've got to ensure that you've designed that again from the ground up with all interfaces secure and authenticated, all streams encrypted, and HTCP capable. And you've got to sort of take on board those enterprise IT uh, principles, um, uh, you know, such sort of threat modeling to understand system level vulnerabilities. So, you know, we, we want a system that um, where an, an IV sort of sys, uh, an, an IT sysadmin person is seeing this as fundamentally a very solid IT product with AV uh, capabilities rather than an AV product that someone sort of happened to bolt a bit of networking up. Sure. And you know, we've seen huge evolutions in control rooms over the years. Yeah, you know, the increase in demand for network solutions, the need for more content and data when and where we want it, and the need for more collaboration are, are just a few examples. But as we know, certainly in AV, technology doesn't stand still. So I guess, <laughs> how do you see control rooms evolving in the coming years? Well, I think you've sort of touched on a lot of the key sort of wants uh, of a system in that, in that sort of introduction, Mike. Um, and I'll add something to that that's sort of really been sharply highlighted by you know, our ongoing coronavirus pandemic. And that is that you don't necessarily need people to be in the same room to be able to work together. So if you, you know, the, the, the guiding principle where a control room is about sharing with people in the room um, is increasingly um, with the ability of AV over IP is sharing much more remotely. It opens up the entire topology of the control room. And, and what, what was one room becomes many um, nodes of information sort of gathering and, and sharing. Um, and add to that the technology improvements in uh, displays. So a, a, someone sat at a workstation has, has got just as many pixels canvas in front of them as has been in the entire control room for, for many years. So it, it all changes up the way the shape uh, that control rooms look like. And, and it's very much the plural now. Yeah. And obviously, as a, a leader, as a leading innovator, perhaps we should describe it, you know, um, DataPath is obviously driving this market forward. Um, and you recently launched a new control room solution called um, Atria. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, yes. Described as an integrated solution for the design, management and operation of control rooms of any size. What can you tell us about that? What can you tell us about Atria? Well, clearly you've you've got the strap line down to a T. So nice one, Mike. Uh, it's very much. Um, it starts with uh, the design. You've you sort of mentioned it's just design, management, and operation. All of those things need to come together in order to get a a real sort of uh, integrated solution. So starting with design, um, you, you start by providing tools for system integrators to be able to sort of handle and, and, and visualize all of the inputs and output modes that they've got to uh, and how you're going to interconnect to them. Um, and unlike previous data path software, those nodes now include, uh, Atria includes operator workstations in that mix. 
So there's the design thing. Then there's the configuring. A big part of all of this information coming together is that you don't want to drown in all of that. You know, if you've provided the ability to have hundreds, if not thousands of sources, you want to be able to manage those in a consistent way, in a centralized way. So what one person calls camera 57 or the view from the street is exactly the same as someone in another room or on another workstation. It's all centralized. It's all managed. Uh, and also the way, a consistent way to deploy those things. So we have centralized templates, layouts, um, um, so sort of user rights allocations, all of those are about how you manage all of this information. Uh, and then obviously into the control and very much based on well con respected wall control 10 software for managing control rooms. But obviously, as I say, adding in that whole dimension of uh, the operator workstation, which is becoming like a personal video wall in its own right. Sure. No, it, it certainly sounds like a, a fascinating solution and a, and a very exciting time for Databath. So thanks so much for your time today, John. I guess uh, one last thing to say is for more information, please visit uh, uh, www.datapath.co.uk and, uh, and we'll speak again soon. Thanks, Mike. It's been a pleasure.